Good morning and good afternoon to everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Today's presentation is ETMF Quality Oversight, a Risk-Based Approach, and I am your presenter for today. We will be talking about a couple of different things today. We'll talk about how we can use risk-based assessment to develop our plan for how we conduct our ETMF QC. We'll talk about the different types of QC activities that can be performed to ensure a high-quality ETMF. And we'll talk about some key artifacts that really just based on experience and regulatory risk, I identify frequently as having quality issues. And so I recommend them as part of your risk-based quality review. My name is Donna Dorzinski, and I am located outside of Philadelphia. I've been in the business for over 25 years. I started in clinical development and clinical and moved over to quality, so I kind of sit on both sides of the fence. After 15 years in large pharma, I started my own consulting company, and I've actually had my own company now for the last 13 years. I am a compliance professional, as I mentioned, with a strong ClinOps perspective. I've been involved in the reference model, having chaired the Zone 4 changes for version 3, and I also work on several other zone committees, as well as serving on subcommittees now. I have a significant amount of experience with Part 11, although I don't sell myself, I certainly don't say I'm a Part 11 expert. I get the whole concept of, of Part 11. I've been involved in Part 11 systems since 1995. So even before we got Part 11, I've certainly been involved in the business side of, oper of you know, using a system. And I don't know how many of you are using an ETMF right now, but that's certainly a lot, a strong consideration. Could I just give me a check mark if you're using an ETMF? So it looks like most of you are using an ETMF. I'd like to start out with the definition of TMF. I know we always talk about TMF. I think it's important to understand that the TMF is standalone documentation. So really your TMF should tell the story of your study. It doesn't really need a lot of verbal discussion. Um, the best, the health authority inspections are the one that you don't have to sit and talk to the health authority inspector, right? So we always dread that conversation with the inspector. And it's, and if the documentation speaks for itself, we really shouldn't have to have too much conversation with the inspector. I've had two recent inspections the last, actually in the last year, and both of them had minimal interviews because the TMF itself was able to tell the story. So we didn't really need the subject matter experts to tell the story. When you have a health authority inspection, they're really looking at a couple of things. They're looking to see how did you conduct the study? So did you, the study you conducted, was it in alignment with the protocol that's been approved? They want to know the integrity of the trial data. So in other words, is there, can they believe the data, right? So what's your data integrity? And then they want to make sure that you've been compliant with GCP. One of the big focuses, if you've read ICH E6, the re revision, a big focus of all of this is human subject protection. And if you think about it, there's a lot of evidence of the human subject protection activities that are available in the TMF. And so this collective output of information allows the inspector to evaluate the conduct of the trial, the integrity of their data, and overall compliance with GCP. I think key here is that this is an output for all functional areas, not just clinical. So before, it was a clinical responsibility to make sure there was a TMF. And I still hear that. I still go into companies and I hear them say, oh, that's clinical's responsibility. We're really not involved in that. But then when I say to them, well, did you do anything related to the study? And of course they say, well, absolutely. Then I say, well, all the evidence of what you did is TMF content. And that's how I convince people that they really are creating TMF content. Because what I say to you is if you aren't creating TMF content, then you're really irrelevant to the study, right? So everything relevant to the study needs to go into the TMF. So what are our current regulatory requirements? Well, one of the first ones is a well-defined content list. Right, we need a list of all the content that supports the study. Now, we don't need a list of every record, but basically kind of what are the different groups of documents that we will have that will help us to support how we conducted the study. In the past, when I give this presentation, I always say, you know, EMA, MHRA, they will come into your organization and they will go right into your TMF and they will look directly for themselves. So if you are active in an MHRA or EMA region, you have to be prepared for an inspection of your TMF as soon as you have health authority approval in that country. So even if you don't have any active sites, if you, once you're active in that country, you are at risk for an inspection. 
FDA was a little bit easier because they would just come in and say, I want to see this, I want to see that. Well, in the last year, they've changed that approach. And there are FDA inspectors that are coming in and saying, I want to look in your TMF. Give me access to your TMF. I want to see what's in there. So while before, if we were an FDA-focused organization, we were like, oh, well, we don't really have to worry about it. Well, now you do. They want to see your TMF. So it's quite possible if you're going to get inspected, your inspector will want to be in your TMF. A content list is a kind of a structure of how your, org your TMF is organized and, and what to expect to find in that. And so the health authorities want this type of a content list. They also want you to have a comprehensive TMF management process. How do you set your TMF up? How do you manage it throughout the life of the study? And then how do you close it down at the end of the study to make sure that it's complete? And then subsequently, how do you archive that TMF? And then lastly, you need to be inspection ready at all times. Remember, I mentioned that EMA and MHRA can come at any time. So we can no longer wait till the end of the study to file all of our TMF content. We have to file that as the study goes. So let's talk a little bit about quality review of the TMF, because this is a really important part of making sure that, yes, you are in fact ready for an inspection when an inspection occurs. 